In today's video, we're gonna be talking about why you should not be considering getting a Great Dane. Welcome back to the Femora Great Dane Show. If this is your first time here, my name's Will. I'm a canine behaviorist and I'm the founder and CEO here at FenraCanineLeaders.com. This channel is dedicated to helping you learn everything that you could possibly ever want to know about the incredible Great Dane breed, then how to become a high level canine leader that can raise perfect Great Danes. So if you're a lifelong Dane lover or just thinking about getting your first Great Dane puppy, then I promise you this channel is for you. So start by hitting that subscribe button, turn on that notification bell so you never miss a future Great Dane video. So let's dive into today's video and we're going to discuss some of the cons of the Great Dane and why it might be worth reconsidering bringing this extremely large breed into your home. And the first thing we need to consider when possibly thinking about bringing a Great Dane into our home is that they can be very expensive. Do you have a big enough car? Most Great Danes will struggle to fit comfortably and safely in a regular sized car. It is something to really consider if you like to take your dog with you when you go out or even just for those annual trips to the vets even if everything always goes perfectly how about the food that it will cost and the how much it needs to eat this breed will require high quality food with good proteins and healthy fats to foster slow and steady growth prompting growth too quickly in this breed will lead to joint problems and other issues that can lead to much more costly problems down the road starting at two months of age a larger great dane puppy can eat up to four cups of food every day and that amount of food increases every single month to a fully grown Great Dane can easily pack away 10 cups of food per day. If you feed dry food, you may easily be looking at well over $100 a month just to feed one of these giants, let alone if you go to raw food, it can be astronomically more. Now, if you want to go on vacation, can't bring your Great Dane with you and don't have anyone to dog sit, you can expect to pay a lot more to board your Great Dane at a kennel as well. So that takes us on to the next reason why you probably shouldn't be getting a Great Dane, and that has to do with its health. This is a massive dog, and the breed does have some pretty prevalent health issues. This can also mean, like we mentioned earlier, enormous vet bills. This breed is very susceptible to bloat, which when the stomach turns over on itself, and bloat is a life-threatening issue and requires emergency surgery, and is a very common issue why Great Danes pass away early. The procedure can cost anywhere of 1500 up to seven and a half grand now while you can get a specialized surgery to get the dog's stomach tacked to prevent bloat this is a medical procedure where the dog's stomach is pinned to the inside of the abdomen wall and that itself can cost anywhere from 500 to 800 dollars now great danes also have other health problems such as hip and elbow dysplasia these conditions affect the dog's hip joints where it connects to the pelvis and the elbow joints and causes the dog to have trouble with mobility hip or elbow dysplasia can be due to to genetics diet or not exercising appropriate caution while the dog is still young and growing now surgery for hip dysplasia is also expensive and again can be three and a half to seven and a half grand to correct and that is just for one side if the dog is compromised on both sides the price easily doubles because the Great Dane is a larger breed, it will just cost much more for all these medical procedures as they require more anesthesia to fully sedate them. Medication costs are also much more due to their size and the fact that they will need a much larger dosage than a dog breed of average size or less. And lastly, sad to this breed's uh, large size and health issues within the breed it does then have a much shorter lifespan great danes on average live about eight to 12 years but it's not uncommon for dogs to pass away as young as five years old from one of the various health issues that they do struggle with Sorry to quickly interrupt the video guys, but I've just got to let you know that today's video is brought to you by our very own bootcamp protocol. As a canine behaviorist, I've helped thousands of people be able to restructure their relationships with their dog, how to become a high level canine leader that can then address any behavior difficulties themselves to get to that point of having a perfect canine companion. So if you want my help with addressing any difficult behaviors you might be having with your dog, a link to our bootcamp program is down in the description box below. So you can go check it out. There's tons of testimonials on the website website it might be exactly what you're looking for but we'll get straight back to the video you were just watching 
Now, our next reason for why you shouldn't get a great day in is if they do not have a calm, confident, and consistent leader, behavior problems can and do quickly arise, which as a canine behaviorist is very common and one of the main reasons I obviously work so much with Great Danes. The Great Dane is a large, incredibly powerful breed, and while they are known for being gentle, this does not mean that they are a soft breed. If they do not have an effective, confident leader, they can quickly get out of hand. And for a dog that can easily easily reach up to 200 pounds, one would be hard pressed to try and restrain this breed by physical means alone. Even something just as simple as playful nipping or jumping up on people then becomes an often very serious problem just because of their size and it can easily lead to injury if the dog does not and even if the dog doesn't mean to. This is why having excellent communication and being an excellent canine leader is especially important with a Great Dane even if it's displaying exactly the same behaviors as another dog just because of that incredible size those behaviors can be astronomically worse now when great danes are younger they will need a solid 30 to 60 minutes of exercise to keep them happy and to take the edge off so that they don't get pent up and get into something that they shouldn't be doing now as they get older they do tend to slow down a bit and have less need for them to work out so much just to keep them under control now while great dane would be happy to accompany its owner it might have a harder time doing incredibly long hikes or an activity that requires a, a higher level of exercise it is actually possible to overdo it with this kind of dog as they have such long legs and can be prone to injury if they exert themselves too much if you you're a fan of all day long hikes over challenging terrain and want a dog to accompany you the great dane is going to have a rough time keeping pace with you and you might be better off with a more active breed more suited for those kinds of adventures and our last reason you shouldn't get a Great Dane is that they share similar issues with other large breeds. Great Danes do drool and slobber a lot, especially after eating or drinking. They also tend to drool when they get excited. It is certainly not uncommon for a Great Dane's drool to end up on your clothing, up the walls, on the furniture, and even on the ceiling. The Great Dane is a massive dog with a very large presence. It should come as no surprise that their voice suits that. Danes often alert when and they hear something exciting outside or a dog passes by the home or someone walks by which can be a bit much given that they are extremely loud barkers a dane can also easily knock over a fully grown person so you have to take care when bringing one of these dogs into a home with young children or elderly family members they're sometimes just simply not aware of their own size and just bumping into somebody playfully can be enough for a real accident to happen so although I love Great Danes as a breed, they're wonderful dogs and they are an absolute pleasure and joy to work with. It certainly doesn't mean that they're for absolutely everybody. Now, I know that video was a little bit negative, but don't worry, we are going to do five reasons why you absolutely should be getting a Great Dane. So I hope you found that video informational at least. If you did, hit that thumbs up button. If you think there's something we left out that you want to add to, get involved down in the comment section below. And don't forget, you've got to make sure you subscribe so that you never miss a future episode of the Fenrir Great Dane Show.